So in terms of barriers and challenges that we met in Malta, I would start by the most obvious one who has been a trust, a trust factor. As you can imagine, this cohort is, is quite um, suspicious, uh, always worried that uh, they would touch some of their uh, benefits, so uh, trust had to be established. But thanks to having uh, an established network of social uh, operators that were familiar with, with this cohort, uh, trust could easily be uh, circumvented in that respect. One of the biggest uh, challenges that we faced uh, at the beginning of the project uh, was uh, related uh, to identifying stakeholders uh, interested and willing to collaborate with us uh, in delivering uh, Smart Up. Uh, this was mainly due to the fact uh, that uh, actors from the social sector were not aware of the fact uh, of the problem of energy poverty and uh, were not therefore uh, willing to co collaborate. Uh, it was uh, solved uh, by talking to them about the problem uh, and uh, creating awareness on the fact that energy poverty exists uh, also in, in Italy. And uh, once they managed uh, to understand the problem, they were really happy to, to work with us. Uh, so it is at the same time a challenge, uh, but also a success. Uh, Concerning uh, the data that we are retrieving from the smart meters, that was a huge challenge to have a good quality and access to this data. We are living in a smart meter world, but to all the bureaucratics that they are behind, uh, they are really complicated. There are ethic issues, there are uh, pr uh, data protection issues as well, and it was really complicated. So we were forced to use uh, uh, questionnaires, uh, billing information, and in some cases phone calls just to retrieve this data. So it was quite difficult to access this data, that it's, it's there, but we cannot grab it and, and take it. One challenge of working with households in energy poverty is that they already engage in coping mechanisms to reduce their energy consumption. This means it can be difficult and often unethical to encourage them to reduce their consumption further in order to make carbon savings, for example. This meant that as part of the project, we had to encourage them to increase energy consumption where possible, to achieve thermal comfort and results for their health and well-being, and that we encourage them to make positive changes to their energy behaviours where possible and have that balance between increased consumption for thermal comfort and well-being and decreased consumption in areas where it was ethical to do so.